Well, I'll be here with a blue shell. We're back doing another video into the science behind the Mario franchise. And this time, we're taking a look at an enemy that Mario's been fighting since his first foray into the Mushroom Kingdom to dethrone Bowser. Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Science Of, the show where I take a look at the science behind your favourite game shows and more. Today, we're continuing our long dive into the science behind the Super Mario series. And for once, we're taking a look at one of Bowser's many, many minions seen throughout the series. Ah yes, the Bullet Bill. These anthropomorphic missiles have a giant jets that propel them around the Mushroom Kingdom. In most games, the Bullet Bill is a really easy enemy to defeat. In the original Super Mario Bros, you can jump on Bullet Bills to defeat them without sustaining any damage. The main difference between the Bullet Bills seen throughout the early appearances compared to the later games is that the Bullet Bill started to target its victims. There are a few different types of bullet bill, but besides the size, there isn't really much of a difference in how they act, and mostly just have small cosmetic changes such as the cat bullet bills, gold bullet bills, and the king bill, which was a screen clearing bullet bill seen throughout the Wii U Mario games. Today, we're taking a look at the science behind these ballistic baddies to see how likely they are to damage Mario whenever they hit him. And to be fair to the bullet bill, we're going to be taking a look at the Bullet Bill seen throughout the Super Smash Bros series, which is unique amongst Bullet Bills for actually being quite fast. First things first, we need to determine the size of the Bullet Bill compared to a known quantity. Fortunately, there's no end of heights we know in the Mario series, thanks to our many excursions into the Mushroom Kingdom. Once again, we're going back to the Smash Bros training stage to see how big the Bullet Bill is. As we've established time and time again, the Smash Bros training stage is split up into meter by meter squares and we can use this grid to find the size of the bullet bill. We can split the bullet bill into four distinct sections, three cylinders and one cone for the face. This includes one cylinder 45 by 140 centimeters, one cylinder 10 by 125 centimeters and one cylinder 100 centimeters by 140 centimeters. We get the volumes for these cylinders by finding the area of their circles using pi times the radius squared and then multiply this by the height of the cylinder. This gives us volumes of 0.9 meters cubed, 0.039 meters cubed, and 4.4 meters cubed. The nose cone for the bullet bill is what is known as an elliptical cone. This means that it has a smooth curved surface with a blunt nose. If the nose were cut in half, then the resulting cross section would be half of an ellipse. So we use the equation pi times the diameter squared times the height of the cone divided by six. So we have a diameter of 140 and a height of 70 centimeters. This gives us a cone volume of 1.44 meters cubed. If we add all of these volumes together, then we get a total volume for our bullet bill of 6.77 cubic meters. Now that we have the volume of our bullet bill, we need to figure out how heavy it is, as this will be an important factor in the impact it has upon Mario. To figure out how heavy the bullet bill is, we first need to decide what material it's made out of. Whenever we see bullet bills, they're fired out of cannons, unlike most missiles, which suggests that they're some kind of cannonball. Now, there have been many different types of cannonball throughout the years, but something that they've pretty much all shared is that they are made of iron, specifically cast iron. Now, there are two different kinds of bullet bills seen throughout the series, the sort which explode on contact with Mario as seen in Super Smash Bros, and the type that causes damage from the force of impact as seen in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Let's assume for now that the damage to Mario is caused completely by the impact with the bullet bill. And besides the engine at the back of the bullet bill, it is made up entirely of cast iron. Cast iron has a density of between 6,850 and 7,750 kilograms per cubic meter. If we multiply the lower end of this density by our given volume of 6.77 cubic meters, then we find that the bullet bill weighs a whopping 46,374 kilograms. Now to figure out the impact force produced by the bullet bill. For the impact force, we start by calculating the dynamic kinetic energy of a moving object. This is done by multiplying the mass by velocity squared and then dividing it by two. The bullet bill's velocity can be found in Super Smash Bros where the bullet bill covers 50 meters in half a second. Velocity is distance divided by time, so this means that the bullet bill has a velocity of 30 meters per second. 30 meters per second squared multiplied by a mass of 46,374.5 kilograms is 41,737,050, which we then divide by two, which gives us 20,868,525 joules of kinetic energy. This kinetic energy is equal to the work being done by the impact force when slowing down an object. 
This means that the Bullet Bill hits Mario with over 20,800 kilonewtons of force, equal to about 5 kilograms worth of TNT. This amount of force is more than enough to take all 99 of Mario's lives, never mind the surrounding area. If you remember back in my video on the science behind Mario's blue shell, then you'll remember that the blue shell would take out the whole of Peach's castle every time it hit a racer. The bullet bill somehow isn't so deadly, with it only causing fatal impact to anyone within 4 meters of the impact, and it would have to have hit a house directly for it to be completely demolished. Houses over 8 meters away won't have any kind of structural damage at all. And in many ways, this makes the bullet bill even better for Bowser, as he won't need to rebuild his castle and strongholds every time Mario comes running through. So now we know the kind of damage that can be caused by a bullet bill made up of nothing but iron. But what about the bullet bills that blow up on impact? In this case, let's say that the bullet bill has a hard iron shell that's 10% the volume of the bullet bill, containing a ton of explosive powder. But exploding cannonballs didn't only contain gunpowder, they also held shards of metal to act as shrapnel to increase the effectiveness of the explosion. So let's say another 10% of this volume is filled up by shrapnel. This would mean that the bullet bill is about 80% gunpowder. This means that 5.4 out of 6.77 cubic meters volume is pure gunpowder. This assumes that the rocket and fuse system in place to fire off the bullet bill have negligible volumes. So once it's fired off, what will 5.4 cubic meters of gunpowder be able to do? First of all, gunpowder can be compacted down into solid blocks. These have a density of 1,700 kilograms per meter cubed. This means that, in theory, we could have as much as 9,180 kilograms of gunpowder packed into our bill-shaped projectiles. One kilogram of gunpowder will produce about 3 megajoules of energy when exploding. This is around two-thirds as strong as a kilogram of TNT. This means that our bullet bill would explode with the energy of 6,120 kilograms of TNT, so much more powerful than its non-explosive counterpart. Well, it shouldn't be too surprising to you when I say that having 1,224 times the energy is going to be more damaging than the regular old bill. But it might be a surprise to you that this bullet bill now has more energy than the blue shell did, being felt over 2,500 meters from the impact, with buildings being demolished left, right and center within 100 meters. If we imagine this in terms of London, if a bullet bill went off in the Houses of Parliament in the city of Westminster, you'd be able to feel it as far as Cock Lane in the city of London. The other interesting thing about this is how surprising it is that the bullet bills don't explode whenever Mario jumps on them. You'd expect them to explode on contact, but apparently that only applies to the tip. So there we go. Whilst the original bullet bills from Super Mario Bros would struggle to bruise Mario, let alone kill him, the bonsai bill seen throughout the Mario Kart series, whilst not as deadly as the blue shell, are still more than powerful enough to take down a building. And then the exploding bullet bill from Super Smash Bros Ultimate is an absolute behemoth of an enemy. I'm pretty sure Mario could lose every single one of his lives every time one of those explodes on the other side of the level, let alone hitting him dead on the schnoz. We've still got another explosive enemy to cover from the Mario series. We still have to look at the bob -omb to see how dangerous it could be for the denizens of the Mushroom Kingdom. As well as that, I'd love to hear about any more Mario characters that you'd like me to cover the science behind, so make sure to tell me in the comments down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help combat the ever-changing and frustrating YouTube algorithm, then make sure you share the video to help my channel grow. If you have any scientific subjects or topics that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. As well as that, follow me on Twitter to get updates on the latest science of videos, and join my Discord for chats about science, gaming and more. But until then, this has been the Science of the Bullet Bill. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for game-based content, then you can join me over on Twitch, where I livestream three times a week playing all manner of games suggested by the community. Or if you want to support the channel even further, then you could also contribute to my Patreon, where you'll get behind the scenes access to the creation of all videos, as well as being able to vote on what the next science of video will be.